Is David Stockman getting this wrong deliberately? I I don't know what's going on here, but I don't I don't like this. This is uh, investor version of climate change uh, scaremongering. It's uh it's actually quite weird to me. So I'm just gonna I'm not gonna show you the article, but I'll link it to in the show notes. This is from LouRockwell.com or uh, David Stockman. Uh, what's his website? I'm not even sure what the website is. Uh, I guess I guess just David Stockman. Yeah. And you might remember for David Stockman, uh, he resigned somewhat ceremoniously from OMB under Reagan. It was the OMB office management budget because of Reagan deficits and the spending and all that. And this is in the 81. Um, anyway, I, I just this is just weird. I don't it's no different than the climate change people. It's nuts. Okay. After decades of unhinged money pumping, the Fed has driven real interest rates so low that there are no more bond investors just traders and suckers. The former have driven the 10-year yield in recent days to just 150 basis points, actually 130 right now, and deeply in the red in terms of real rates, i.e. after inflation. All right, uh, let's see. So I keep wanting to read it. These are, um, these are no longer even markets by any historical sense. The bond markets and stock exchange are just mindless gambling casinos. All right, so check this out. Inflation-adjusted yields have previously meandered around 10% for several decades. Hmm, is that true, David? And he gives us a graph, which I'm not going to show it to you. I'll show you my version of it here in just a second. Inflation-adjusted yields have previously meandered around the 10% level for several decades. But no more. The real yield is so low that the yield star fund managers are throwing caution in the wind and setting themselves up for massive future losses. All right. Um, so I'm going to show you what he's showing us. All right. So we got real treasury yields. He goes back to well, I'm going 1996 here. I want to go right here. Okay. So we're going back to 1985. All right. Real treasury yields. Now, well, 1982. That's minus inflation. 10-year treasury minus inflation. That's the real yield. And this is what he shows. That he starts it right here in 1984, I think, or 85. Because you see, yeah, it's much more effective to start right here. Yeah, he does. This, this is... <sighs> anyway, so we start, we'll just say 1982. Real treasury yields are 8.4. 1985, 7.8. Then they fell to 3.4. And then they're going down to where basically in negative rates here. All right, so what's the problem with this? Well, it's like all these uh, hy hysterics is matter when you start the premise. So, oh my goodness, real treasury yields have been hovering around 10% for several decades, and now they're uh, less than so low, they're less than 1%, they're, they're uh, even negative. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, yeah, the form of driven the 10 year uh, traders and suckers have driven the 10 year yield in recent days at just 150 basis points and deeply in the red in real terms. There is no more market for this because look at that. Look at that. All right. So I said, well, let's take this and we're going to go back to 1926 and we're going to look at the 10 year treasury and we're going to look at the real returns. Do we ever see is hovering around 10 percent for decades ever? No, we don't. But look at this, man. So right here, what's this year? 1932. Huh, interesting. And why was it hovering? So why was it hovering in high uh, above 10%? Because this is deflation right there, man. This is the interest rate. This is deflation. That's the only reason why. That's the only reason why. Look at that. So here we got negative interest rates in the midst of world war right after world war ii all right why well because we got what that was at 1947 yep 1947 because we had high inflation coming out of world war ii high inflation in 1942 during world war ii but i mean we had a spike right here because this is when paul volcker said and i look i think he had something to do with getting rid of inflation but i don't think it's all him but if we go back to 1980s, why do we have a spike? Let's get real. Let's move this guy over here. It's just this whole, I don't get this, man. Because 1980s, we had a huge increase in 10-year treasury bonds while high inflation. But then slowly but surely, the inflation started going away. But Paul Volcker kept the interest rates high to make sure we killed inflation. And we did. So here you got 9.2 is the yield on treasuries. 1.9 is the inflation. As you can see, 
the inflation now starts catching up with the low yields, if that makes sense. Or the low yields catch up with the low inflation. I, I mean, so look at this, man. Where, where is Stockman getting this uh, for decades, the real 10-year trade? I, 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 this is what the climate change people, they started in 1979 to show the data of how the earth is warming. I'm like, why not start in 1960? Why not start in 1930 when we had the, our huge, the decade of the 30s was massively high. Why not start in there? Because 1979 is when we came out of the, at the bottom of the global cooling concern. That's just fake. I hate it. I hate this stuff. And the funny thing is, he doesn't just use that in 1985. Why else are you starting in 1985? That's what bothers me most. Because then we have other chats, uh, charts using the Federal Reserve Board uh, total leverage ratio for the economy. Debt to GDP going back to 1947. And uh, I mean, I, and so 1980, we had 1.5, it's 150, was that 150? Yeah. So the debt to total GDP, GDP, that's all debt, not just government debt, is 150 basis points, 150%. So we had 50% more debt than total GDP. All right. And now we got uh, almost, uh, it's about three, 380% of GDP, total debt. So how come he can go back to 1947 there, but not but not 1947 in his uh, his uh, right here for his uh, real treasury rates? That doesn't make sense. But Josh is not concerned, dude. If you're looking total debt and you're not looking at asset prices, it doesn't matter. I, I don't understand this, man. Total debt, yes, is much higher. Assets are much much higher. Are asset prices inflated because of debt? Probably, but you can't. You got to look at it. What are your net worth is? It's all about net worth. And I'm sorry. Your house isn't going to fall 50%. It's not. So the bulk of people's debt is in the mortgages. The bulk of people's assets are in the mortgages. So to say debt to GDP is, uh, in it, if itself means it's a sucker's bet and it's going to become crash, it's just freaking dumb, man. And then to use this from 1947, but to use this other chart from 1985, I, I, I don't get this. All right, back in the day, all right, let's see. Can the clowns perch in the Fed explain how the U.S. economy can grow in the future when it's submerged in so much debt? Can they also explain how interest rates can ever be normalized in real terms without blowing up the entire financial edifice? Well, yes, we can. That's easy because we can say, here's, look, I showed you right here. Here, well, I'll show you right now. Here is our average, the average of real interest rates is 1.88. The average, man, the median is 1.9. So 50% of the time we have higher than 1.9, 50% of the time we have lower, the average 1.88. So yes, we have normalized interest rates right here. Without question, without question, or they're on the low end of normalized, but still, it's not like it's, I, I just don't get this stuff, man. And do they have a clue what will happen to continue to signal private public parties to borrow like there's no tomorrow by keeping real interest rates submerged in negative territory? The answer is no. But he's been, oh. And, oh, man, this is kind of like with Dave Ramsey, man. Stop has got lots of good things to say, but to, to hammer yourself on one, one area, and he's been doing it for 40 years, it's just, it's, it's not right. And then to take people away with you with some basic... It's propaganda, man. I don't know what else to say. It's propaganda. I'm like, dude, and not, I'm not saying Dave Ramsey's propaganda, but the same thing with Dave Ramsey when he says all these things are scams. I'm like, dude, you're hurting the message by throwing the baby out with the bathwater. And here, Stockman, I, I don't look. We got we got these charts that go back, and yet he, uh, I hate data manipulation to sell a point. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. This is what these guys are doing. No different than climate change, people. It's the same thing. It freaking ticks me off. I right, love your thoughts. We'll see you.